Uh, so the Holy Spirit has to be very gentle. And for me, I just took the parameters off and started to say, okay, reach me any way that you can. And what I felt was just to be extremely open and attentive. So that's why I, could, I started to see bumpers, stickers, billboards, messages on license plates, uh, messages on songs on the radio when I would just seemingly call out for help and just flip on the radio for 15 seconds and get just what I needed that way. Uh, people on the street, um, I think uh, Linda brought up that, that whole topic of looking for confirmation, affirmation and witness from people, that actually the Holy Spirit does speak through our brothers and sisters. And uh, I started to open up to, okay, I don't personally have to hear the message. I can actually hear it from my brothers and sisters. I don't have to think that I'm being dependent if they're telling me something and I have a recognition that, that I don't have to necessarily say, no, that's an external voice. Uh, I can say, hmm, that really resonates. Like, for example, when I, I was so into Course in Miracles, I was so excited, I had so many miracles happening every day, and I would go and try to share all of this joy and miracles with my parents, and they would break eye contact, uh, look away, uh, change the subject, uh, talk about the weather, talk about the sports, the latest sports scores, or pretty much the latest gossip in the family or anything uh, to basically change the subject uh, with verbal and nonverbal clues. And I still had so much joy, it was like spilling over. It was almost like I could hardly contain it. And then it, this continued on for some time and then my mother said, you need to find other people to share this with. And at first, of course, the ego took offense at this, and then I thought, oh, that was the Holy Spirit uh, speaking. You need to find other people to share this with. And then when I followed that guidance, I went back to the Course, and it said that miracles are involuntary, they should not be under conscious control, and basically Jesus said, you need me to direct you where to perform the miracles. That, that I have to be, I, Jesus, have to be in charge of where the miracles are bestowed. You can't just go around indiscriminately, like a machine gun, <laughs> you know, just trying to, to shoot the miracles out onto the world, you know, uh, like a Lucy or something, you know. You can't do that. No, you're not. But the thing about it was, I, I was finding from the reactions of people, that it wasn't necessarily inspiring joy uh, when I was sharing my joy. So then you start to become humble and start to say, oh, I need to listen very carefully when my brother or sister are speaking to me and really ask, what are they really saying to me? And even deeper, what is it that I really need to hear in this encounter? Because that's, it doesn't matter, they may be speaking insanely on the surface, but, but the Spirit is within them, and the Spirit is calling for something. That encounter is very purposeful. What, what do I really need to hear myself say? And so, that helped me clear away from more guidance, because I would just show up very willing, without a clue of how to be helpful, of how to heal, but also very confident and certain that the Holy Spirit was present. And if I stayed clueless, and I stayed out of the way with all my past learning of what I think should happen, what I should say, and what I ought to say, and all this and that, then let the Holy Spirit come through, and then it inspired joy. And they would be laughing. Sometimes they would be lighting up like a birthday cake, and I would be thinking, wow, they're really joyful. I don't know what just happened here. Sometimes I couldn't even feel the intensity of joy that they seemed to be witnessing, but they were showing, that was an inroad to me to get in touch more and more with my own joy. So the main step I took was, was taking the parameters off of how I had to receive it, and then it started to expand from there. I also felt a, like a tickle in my heart, which, which was probably the most consistent kind of touchstone experience, if somebody had a little feather in my heart chamber. It wasn't verbal, it wasn't intellectual in the least bit, it was just like a, a little tickle that was going and whenever I would 
read certain things or hear certain ideas in any way, shape, or form, in song or in a book, in a movie or whatever, tickle would go. So then when I came to A Course in Miracles, that was the inner tickle, it was like the confirmation, like, okay, this is it, this is your pathway, this is what you've been asking for, now you have no excuses, <laughs> now apply it, you know, make it work. And after about two to two and a half years of reading the Course for about eight hours a day, on the average, uh, that's when I could discern a clear voice. It was, it was not like a voice that we hear through human ears, but it was more like, like a stream of thoughts that was very clear and very specific and was guiding me very specifically where to go, what to do, what to say, what not to say, you know, I mean it was very, very specific and that really sped everything up, you know, in terms of my, my whole journey.